So first, we'll take a look of a picture. This right here, it's the graph for absolute form of x. And when x is equal to 0, it's this point at this corner. And remember, differentiable means that we should be able to find the derivative. And derivative means what? The slope of the tangent line, right? And now the question is, can we draw tangent line at this corner? Maybe you can do it like this. Maybe you can do it like this. Maybe you can do it like this. Maybe we can just change a different angle. And maybe not at all, right? And in fact, this is how you can just look at a picture and see that whenever you have a corner or maybe a sharp turn on the graph, it is not differentiable at those points. So this is an example for that. And keep in mind, this function it is continuous for all x values. We can plug in x is equal to 0 right here. And you can just draw the curve like this, right? This is an example that a function is continuous but not differentiable. I do want to show you guys how to prove this mathematically by using definition, so let's do it. f prime of 0, this is the derivative of this function when x is equal to 0. And I'm just trying to use the definition to see if we can come up with a nice answer or not. If we can get a nice value, and that will be the answer. If not, we will see why not. Anyway, this right here has two versions. I will use this following one. This is equal to, we take the limit as x goes to 0, right? this value, and we do the function, which is f of x minus f of 0. This is the value of the function at this point. And then bottom here is just x minus 0. And notice, this right here is pretty much the slope formula. And when you have x is approaching to this point, you get the slope of the tangent line, right? That's the idea. And there's also another definition in the form of h, h approaching to 0 and things like that. But maybe you guys can look that up and just try it on your own. Anyway, let's see. This right here, you write down the limit as x approach 0. f of x, you just recall the function, namely absolute value of x. Minus, you plug in 0 into here, so you get absolute value of 0. This is not LOL, this is the absolute value of 0, okay? And on the bottom is just x minus 0, like this. And of course, this is just 0, this is just 0, so all in all, we have the limit as x approach 0. On the top is absolute value of x, on the bottom is just x. And how can we deal with this? Can we just plug in 0 into this x and that x? No, because that way we get 0 over 0. That's an indeterminate form. That means we have to do more work. And in this case, we actually just have to break this down into two pieces. And the truth is, the absolute value function is secretly a piecewise function, right? But anyway, here is the usual check that we will have to do. First, I will have to check the limit as x approach 0 from the right direction. From the positive direction. I will just put this down as 0 plus. And then we'll write this down absolute value of x over x. And then, secondly, we will also have to check the limit as x approaching to 0 minus. This is approaching 0 from the left hand side. And then we have the same expression absolute value of x over x. And how can we deal with this now, though? Well, as I mentioned earlier, Absolute value of x is in fact a piecewise function. So I will write this down for you. Remember, absolute value of x, this right here, it's equal to pass the x if the inside is greater than or equal to 0. And this is the negative x if x is less than 0. You don't have to worry about where you put the equal sign. It doesn't really matter because you pretty much will end up. And if you look back to here, this is nothing but just negative x, the graph for that. And this is positive x, the graph for that. So from the positive side, this expression simplifies to the limit as x approaching to 0 plus. So we take a look of just x on the top. And then the denominator is still x, like this. And now we have to reduce this. This is the limit as x approaching to 0 plus, x of x, it's 1. And notice, 
I did not plug in 0 into here and here. Like, it looks like 0 over 0. That's no good. I reduced the x and x first, right? So it's 1. And you, when you take the limit as x approaching to whatever of 1, this is just 1. OK, secondly, this right here, when x is approaching 0 minus, that means x is negative. Absolute value of x, you replace that with negative x. So this is the limit as x approaching 0 minus. On the top, it's minus x now. And then on the bottom, you still write this down as x. And as you can see, this right here, you still write down the limit as x approaching 0 minus. But you reduce this first. You get what? Negative 1. And when you take the limit of negative 1 when x is approaching to whatever, you get negative 1. Okay? And this is how you can you know, break this down, how to simplify this expression by using the definition of absolute value in terms of a piecewise function. And the right limit is positive 1. The limit from the left is negative 1. Aha! So, you see that you end up with two different answers from these two limits. What's the, con what's the conclusion? This right here does not exist. So I will write this down for you guys. This right here does not exist. And why? You have to quote that because the limit from the positive direction, namely x approaching to 0 plus of absolute of x over x, this right here, it's not the same as the limit when x approaching 0 from the negative direction. Right? So when you have a piecewise function like this, you just check both directions. If they don't agree, you don't have limit. And you see that there's no derivative then, because this limit represents precisely the derivative. And when there's no derivative, the conclusion that I will just write this down. The conclusion that absolute value of x is not differentiable, I will just put on dable at x equal to 0, just like that. And before we go, let me just show you guys. In fact, if you would like, you can differentiate this absolute value of x. How? Look at the piecewise function. So, Let's, let me just write it down. f prime of x will be differentiating x, you get 1. Differentiating negative x, you get negative 1. But the derivative doesn't exist at 0. So you have to just say, this right here is when x is positive, and this right here is when x is negative, and 0 doesn't apply anymore. And the graph looks like this. You have a negative 1 right here, and a positive 1 right here. And to show that the derivative doesn't exist at 0, you put down an open circle right here and right here. right? So that you can see that the derivative of absolute value of x is negative 1, anything right here, and then anything right here is positive 1. And if you would like this is negative 1, this is positive 1. Yeah, so hopefully this is clear. In my opinion, this is the main part that you will have to know by using the definition of derivative. Hopefully you guys all like this. If you do, please give me a like and also subscribe to my channel. That's it.